Hello, everybody, and welcome to the third ever episode of Reloading with Brittany Scoville. I am your host, Brittany Scoville, and today we have one of my favorite co-hosts we will ever have on this episode. Bob. (laughs) He's Big Bob. I'm Little Bob. How's it going, guys? I'm Austin. I am Peanut Bob's freaking better half boyfriend better half boyfriend just, yeah. you just, you just i wouldn't say, say better half we're just going to get into how we met and then we're going to get into all of the hunts that we've done together and all of the travel so let's dive right into it and start from the beginning when did we meet where was the first spark well we met at a county fair in my hometown Oh, hell, it was eight years ago, probably. I don't know. It's been a while. Middle school. (laughs) (laughs) I actually kind of turned Britt down then, but... He did. (sighs) Yeah. It was Madison County Fair. I had him on Snapchat. I had his friends on Snapchat. Shelly was actually the one that was Snapchatting me and shit, but I wasn't interested in Shelly. I was interested in Mr. Peebler, who had a girlfriend at the time. God bless. God bless. Whatever. Turn me down. I didn't know we had a girlfriend, so that was my fault. But we've always had a thing for each other. We just never thought we were going to be an item. Yeah. I mean, we've known each other for long enough, and we had the same friend groups and everything. And We grew up 30 minutes from each other. So, I mean, how we kind of rekindled was, if you're an OG and you know my last relationship, it was super public, and it was not the best thing for a woman to go through. Um, but... Brooklyn, my best friend, it was our first year in college, and it was actually winter break, and we posted on our Snapchat, who wants cookies? <laughs> who wants oh, yeah. cookies? Swipe up. And Me and old Klaus, Klaus slid up quick. swiped up, and he <laughs> said he wanted a cookie. And at this point, it was just me and my best friend at this Mexican restaurant eating, and we had like these cookies sitting in our, our car ready to deliver. And, and Klaus was like, hey, you want to come to Winterset? No, I don't want to come to Winterset. There's 30 minutes away. Are you kidding me? You guys meet us in the middle. We met in Martinsdale <laughs> State Bank. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we... We filmed some TikToks. Yeah. You didn't even eat your cookie, so I was no, kind of offended. We but... just wanted to hang out with you guys, dude. Yeah, and at that point, I... You know, we were just... They friends. Were, they were friends. We never, at this point, we weren't looking at each other weirdly or anything because yeah. I, was, I was still in my relationship, but at that point, I was... I was completely checked out. I mean, if you know, you know. <laughs> Let's get into all the places that we have traveled to since being together. And we've been together for three years. We've mm-hmm. been to a lot of places. Well, about four months into us dating, we went to Africa together as our first trip. First time flying for me, everything. And then in August, a couple months later, we are in East Texas, high, high fence hunting. Yeah, that was that was different for us. That was different. It's different, but I respect the angle and why we were in, we were invited. I mean, a yeah. free trip's a free trip, and both parties really benefited from it. So yeah, and it was fun. Obviously, we went whitetail hunting. I mean, yeah, whitetail kind of our passion. Pheasant hunting. I think after that we went back to Texas. If I'm not wrong, we did same place. We went back to Texas, brought all of our friends with us. Yeah. It was an easy. That was a good trip. It was an easy way to get all of our friends together and just not have to worry about anything else. You know, we were all at the lodge. Drinking beer, having a good time, networking. Yeah. It was fun. We shot an odd at, you shot an odd at, and I shot a red sheep. Yeah, yeah. And that red sheep we just got back, it's looking beautiful over there. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Well, then there was the trip that we kind of were like super excited about, like meant the world to us, was going turkey hunting with uh, Josh Bomar. That That was was, insane. Yeah, that was something I never thought that would happen in my life, and... Yeah, Your took bow out. blew. Your bow literally blew up. Yeah, I was pulling it back to make sure everything was good before we went out, and I freaking pulled it back, and it just boom. Yeah, that was tough. That broke my heart. That, that was, was his biggest goal was to shoot his first turkey with his bow, and yeah. that did not happen. <clears throat> he shot a turkey. We both did. We had an awesome time. That's mm-hmm. something we are never going to forget. And Josh Bomar, all respect to that man. He's the most intelligent, smartest person you would ever meet the yeah. way he thinks it's crazy <laughs> for real he was explaining to us we had to go get ratchet straps from orshlands because mm-hmm. his, his ford ranger got stuck and if you know josh bomar he's very notorious for lighting things on fire and getting getting shit stuck <laughs> and when we were turkey hunting he got that thing stuck in the mud oh yeah, yeah he ran that thing in the mud 
our buddy Marcus had to pull us yeah. out because I got my truck stuck right behind him. <laughs> yeah. At the time, he was working at Rambo Bikes, and when he was on lunch, our friend Marcus, he worked at Rambo. When he was on lunch, we had to give him the coordinates and come help us out. But yep. on our way to Orschlands was really interesting because we asked him what country music he was really interested in. And he said that he doesn't listen to music at all and that he essentially got his master's degree listening to educational podcasts and such when he travels. So he couldn't give us a clear answer on Yeah, he said he doesn't really music. listen to much music. So mm-hmm. that was pretty cool. After turkey hunting, we uh, went straight to fall. It was deer hunting. I was guiding and... Uh, northern missouri i ended up shooting a muzzleloader buck i didn't get nothing else this is the year of 2022 so yeah 2022 i didn't get guiding. nothing else i don't think that was the year that i was trying to get familiar with public land mm-hmm. because we moved two hours from our hometown and i wasn't i had i didn't have any ground it's that's something that we can get into also is getting familiar with public and what public hunting is like because that was my first time ever public hunting and we still hunt public. I mean, we pheasant hunt on, on mm-hmm. public land, so. Some of the craziest hunting that I've ever done, especially with that one buck that jumped up in front of me at five yards. Mm-hmm. Tell you what, if it was a shotgun push, that thing wouldn't have made it another five. You ain't going to be a part of no shotgun push. Uh, I, I tell know. you that. No. Oh, I know. I. Yeah. Everybody's different with that opinion. Yeah. I just, we prefer not to. Yeah, I ain't going to shotgun push. But, you know, hunting's hunting, and if you are, are an advocate for conservation in the outdoors, that's all that matters. So I can't really judge you when you're on the same team as us. Yep. Then we took our trip down to Florida and hung yeah. out with Max and Carson. Yes, we did a little bit of fishing down there. Yeah, I caught my first peacock bass. That was sweet, dude. Like, I, I should have mounted that fish. That thing was <laughs> freaking beautiful. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then after Florida, we did more turkey hunting and this is um spring of 2023 with our friends hannah and dawson Mm -hmm. we took coden with us our our dog our weenie dog little bastard takes off across the freaking field yeah we were set so hannah and i were set up on one side of the field in in a blind and austin and dawson were in a different Mm -hmm. you know pop-up blind on the other side of the field we kept hearing you guys this little hand gobble (laughs) we're like dude stop using that thing oh my god and then we get out of the blind because we got so impatient about that one tom we kept hearing Mm -hmm. but he wouldn't come in for us i literally had we i didn't have a leash for weenie so i took my binoculars like the string of my binoculars (laughs) i I made him on a little leash and tied him up to my chair but he just passed out on my lap he did slip he yeah. slipped from under the blind and went running to Austin in their blind. So, yep, Papa's boy. <laughs> it was pretty interesting to see Hannah run after Coden and yeah, in the that's funny. In field. That was funny. We went back to Africa May of 2023. Took keep my mom on forgetting with me. it's 2024 now. Yeah, me too. Golly, it's been flying by. Yeah, we took Tiff with us. That was super fun. She uh, wasn't supposed to hunt, and well, she went off. Mama she, Tiff went crazy. She went crazy. I'm like, you shoot a cute little blessed bug. That's what she said. <laughs> you know, she's been a taxidermist for 20 plus years, and she's never shot a single animal in her life. So for her to be in Africa with us and to say that she wants to, you know, shoot her first animal, that's pretty insane. And for me being her daughter, that was such a special moment to share with her. Yeah, that, that was pretty awesome. She shot a blessed buck and a cape buffalo of all animals. Man, I went through quite a few arrows trying to get that blessed buck. Every time I started, because remember, we had to chase it down? Yeah. And I freaking, I guess I just ruined that one arrow. I kept missing with that So one. what'd you shoot? Oh, well, I got my warthog <laughs> and my uh, wildebeest. Mm-hmm. That warthog was kind of something that was like, I want that warthog. It's, it's got to happen this year. I shot an impala. And then one of the only animals I was ever really concerned about shooting was a kudu. Mm -hmm. That was heartbreaking. I don't have evidence or proof of me shooting a kudu other than my shot placement, which was double long. And I did so much. Just tiny high. Yeah, it just disappeared. We searched. I mean, the blood trail was insane. I I didn't really. We tracked it for like five miles or something like that. I didn't understand. I. I don't know why we didn't wait longer. 
Yeah. It probably would have been a different story if we would have waited Honestly, longer. I think so too. But it was getting our it was getting late and our pH wanted to get get onto it because it did it did look like a, a pretty good shot. A little high. We, yeah. We knew that, but we went out a couple of days later and he probably didn't want a leopard to find it or something. Yes, that's why he wanted to get to it so quickly. And he was anticipating that it was gonna be dead. They're tough animals. Let's talk about their vitals. So their vitals are weird. I mean, their front shoulder, normally like when you shoot on a deer, it's going to be straight down the leg. You're going to want to put it right behind. But on them, so their front leg like goes like this and then down. So you want to shoot right in that gap and not at the, like where the, you'd shoot. The base of the front leg. So that's why my wildebeest was actually, we had to track it so far because I shot it like it was a white tail. My warthog on the other hand, that guy didn't go too far. <laughs> Shot him just about perfect, son. <laughs> the day that my mom shot her Cape Buffalo was also the day that I shot my sable. And that was a story, right? If you there. don't know what a sable is, that's the royal prince of South Africa. It's the most insane animal you will ever see. It's so fascinating to uh, watch them. They're beautiful. They are so beautiful. Yep. Speed up to fall of yeah, last year. I uh I went to Colorado on an elk hunt. Didn't get nothing. It was With the Amish. Yeah, I took the Amish guys out there, and man, that was just stressful. We didn't have a plan at all. One of the Amish guys said he had it all figured out, and it wasn't it. It was not <laughs> it. There was more freaking people than there was elk, so it was just... Tell the story of uh, the bow. Oh, yeah, we were going up the mountain, went to a different spot, and we're like, let me ask this lady if she's ever even seen elk here. Like... <laughs> She, this lady's like, uh uh, I've never seen elk on this trail and I walk it every day. And I'm like, boys, turn these damn bikes around. We ain't going up this mountain no more. <laughs> and uh, we're going down the mountain and we get to the truck and get all the bikes loaded up. I get my bow put in my case, put in the back seat, whatever. And I jump in the driver's seat. I'm ready to go. We take off down the road. And Marvin, one of the Amish guys, leaves his bow on the side of the freaking road. And colorado during archery season for freaking elk at the end of your yeah. trip you went back and saw that we went was... and, yeah we went and bought him a new bow because you don't expect that damn thing to be there anymore and uh we find a cardboard freaking uh letter saying if you forgot your bow here it'll be at the police department in denver which was... well it was supposed to be in the town right down from us but for some reason it got messed up and it ended up in denver and yeah that was that was a pickle <laughs> that was a pickle we got all the way up to our other spot for hunting like three miles of these freaking trails I, and, and i was actually in colorado the same time that austin was but for a completely different reason that was the time that i got introduced to plot basin outdoors and we did a dove hunt and teal hunt in colorado mm-hmm so I was over there with Plot Basin Outdoors, and Austin was there with the Amish. So that was pretty cool. And that was kind of the birth of the friendship I have with Plot Basin and Mike, Gasp, and John, everybody. Last fall, last season, was a complete shock to me because I switched from being a hardcore whitetail hunter to a waterfowl hunter, something that we have never been introduced to. And Yeah, I didn't see that coming. No, and I love it. I'm so glad that I did it. Yeah, I didn't think I was gonna like it because I'm like, man, what's the point? Like birds, it's mostly just the gun part. Like I don't care to. Go when you out see and a big old white gun. tail, you know that gets your heart pumping. Yeah, especially with your bow, like you got to go through so many different things. To it's go more your head. rewarding. Yeah, I think so as well. But waterfowl is completely different. I still get that nervousness, that heart yeah. pounding, and it's a different pace. And I like that it's very mm -hmm. sociable. Man, when you got a big old freaking like 20 pack swooping in on you, holy that's shit. That's sick. When, when they do it dirty, that's what they say. When they do it dirty where their yeah. wings like, you know, go in like that <laughs> sideways. <laughs> oh my God. I we love had it. That, when we were in Wyoming, we had that freaking like 100, that, 200 pack come that flying That hunt in. was dirty. That was greasy. That was. Like straight, straight run to the well, food. Was it, Jiffy Lube. It was a hour and a half. Hour and 15 minutes, we limited out for five people, six people. I will never forget that hunt. That, that was amazing. The teamwork, I mean, everything. We had two female hunters in, in Austin. Yeah. But I would say that hunt, we were all dialed. Oh, no, that first morning, that would have been me, you, and Kreesh. E oh, yeah, you're right. 
Yeah, that was fun. Oh, I'm is sorry. A good shot. I, I mixed up. Yep, we went out the two days later because I had a migraine in between. We had Creech and Caden McDonald and Kirsten. Kirsten and Kirsten. They, yeah. Mm-hmm. There was a couple of them, and the, I mean, those guys are all pretty good with a shotgun. So it was obviously it, me going and shooting a shotgun. It was like I am not <laughs> good at this, dude. <laughs> I am not a shotgun hunter at all. So this is going to be part one of two parts. And the next episode that you're going to see is us go into full depth of each each trip that we just explained and relive all the memories. <laughs> Remy <Remy's> stretching. <laughs> Big stretch, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Better not bump that camera. <laughs> Anyways, this was so much fun. Yeah. No, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm acting as if you're not going to... Probably be in more. Break my back tonight or something. <gasps> oh, frick. What did she say? Remy Damn. bumped it. He bumped he it. He bumped it. You're Brother. done. Brother. You're done. <laughs> you're done. <laughs> okay, guys. This is all we have time for for today. The next episode, you can find us going into deep depth with every trip that we listed. And we're going to relive memories and take a shooter and... Have fun tonight. Yeah. Anyways, like, subscribe, uh. follow Austin <laughs> Peebler. This yeah. is him. Austin dot Peebler on TikTok, Instagram. MySpace. MySpace. Freaking Yahoo. <laughs> <laughs> I love this guy. I, I love, love this my guy Bob. so much. Okay. That's all. The, I think that's it. I think we are good to go. If you don't have anything else to talk about, I'll just have these people go right to the next episode do you have any words of encouragement before we shut this down always stay positive keep fighting and don't let a single person drag you down you're a beautiful soul and you guys deserve the happiness everyone gets in this world hello hi who are you austin.people are on tiktok and instagram (laughs) where'd you just pull that out of uh I got it from my boy Big Daddy Rock Dog on TikTok. <laughs> Guys, check him out. That's my boy. We're going to do an episode with Big Daddy Rock Dog. Yeah, I need my bubba on here. <laughs> I need my bubba on here. Okay, guys, y'all, we'll be back. Peace. <laughs>